All right, let's have some fun. Our first presenter today is Ian with Cooper Automotive. So come on up. Let's hear about it. Well, good morning, and um, again, hope we all had a great, have a great year, uh, 2024. Um, so, um, I'm starting my presentation here. Uh, I'm Ian Gutierrez. I'm Cooper Automotive. Uh, it's our motto is we care about you, we fix your car. So I'll explain a little bit about that. Uh, our mission statement is to provide Colorado Springs automotive owners with reliable, honest, personal, and effective service. Um, so the reason uh, or how I present we care about you, we fix your car is we don't, I mean, we always can find things that are wrong in a car but our, our focus is on the customer. So whatever you need from the car, we'll try to cater to it. So if you just need it to go from A to B and they say, we can do that. Or if you wanna be like brand new, then we can do that too. So that's our motive. Um, so about me, my family, uh, my two kids, uh, they're in uh, uh, Boulder, studying in UC Boulder. Uh, my daughter is uh, doing aerospace engineering, and Liam is doing um, biology and ecology, so they're doing great. Uh, we're going to take a, a trip this uh, week out to Moab or something like that, so we're going to go camping a little cold, but it'll be fun. <laughs> um, okay, uh, my history, I come from Mexico. I, uh, I bought... Cooper Automotive uh, in 2012. So until then, I was uh, in Mexico. I been uh, I'm a uh, IT professional, so I a computer systems engineer. I work project management. I work with big companies with uh, big projects, doing implementations for big systems in uh, Mexico and Latin America and the U.S. too. So in 2012. I bought Cooper Automotive. We packed up the Suburban um, and came over here. So um, I didn't know anybody here in, in Colorado, or I mean, except my ex-wife's husband's parents. Um, so that's how we ended up here because uh, they uh, got married here, and so we all moved here. Um, so. Uh, I bought, I didn't know anything about, uh, I'm a computer systems engineer, so I didn't know, I mean, I fixed my cars as a hobby, I wasn't really a mechanic. I mean, during the years, I became a better mechanic than I expected to, but uh, Jim Cooper was the previous owner, uh, so uh, he stayed with me, uh, I, I hired him as a mechanic, so I was doing the business part of it, and he was doing the mechanical part of it. Uh, so that worked great. Uh, uh, he worked three years with me, and then he's uh, bought a piece of land in Nebraska and moved there. Um, today, my my uh, organization has grown. I mean, uh, uh, the first year when I bought the shop uh, with what I was doing, we grew 30%. Um, up to now, we're doing, I'll show you, but um, so I have... Uh, it's me, I have my manager, so I'm not really at the shop. Uh, my work is to manage the shop from outside. I do uh, the marketing and all the business part of it and um, and networking. I do a lot of networking because my main uh, source is, um, is um, networking or people to, uh, that I know and personal relationships with my customers. I had a very good uh, customer base when I bought the, the shop, and I've been um, making sure that we keep them and we keep them happy. So the history of, uh, of uh, Cooper Automotive with me. Uh, so I bought it in 2012. It was doing uh, $200,000 a year uh, average. Uh, this year we hit eight hundred and ten thousand um, dollars. So it's it's uh, we've been growing and we've been I mean I've been doing things differently, 
I had, you, you can see, uh, I was doing pretty good. Then I had some issues with uh, people and then COVID hit. So, um, but after that, I restructured. I decided to hire a manager to do the managing and me uh, focusing on the business. So that's what's really been uh, helping the business to grow. So, uh, and what I'm doing for the future, uh, I'm working on a project to make uh, a business out of uh, gas, conversion to of gas uh, to electric uh, uh, cars. So if you have a gas car that you really like, or you need it to be electric, like the cities are gonna need to replace all their vehicles to electric by 2035 or 2040. So I'm focusing on that. And uh, so that's uh, um, what, I'm, what I'm good at is, I, I mean, my business is good at the fixing the cars. I'm good at uh, business planning. I love doing business plans. Um, I did everything for uh, my business. I'm a project manager. I'm a certified project manager. I do system implementations and I'm good with crazy ideas. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, the, well, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm need of people that like to work. That's it. So <laughs> we've got five, nine, six minutes are over. So. Any questions? Good morning. Good morning. I am thrilled to learn more about conversions of cars and gasoline to electric vehicles. I think that is uh, an absolutely incredible idea, and there are certain vehicles that I want to convert to electric. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, it's it's. Uh... It's electric cars are a lot simpler than gas cars. So basically you uh, got out all the car, all the uh, motor, the uh, uh, transmission, the exhaust system, the fuel system, and replace it with an uh, electric engine and batteries, a controller. And, uh, and uh, I mean, there's a lot of, depending on the age of the car, uh, some get more complicated because like a lot of, uh, the like the power steering and a lot of the systems work with the engine so you have to find ways to uh, substitute those but it's not uh, cheap um, I mean uh, I don't have a specific but uh, it's anywhere around 30 to 50 thousand dollars to do a, a conversion um, might as well buy one Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's not. I mean, it's it's not for uh, if you're trying to. It, it's not a saving money saving uh, strategy because you're. It's a lot of gas. You know, you can buy a lot of gas with ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand uh, dollars. But it's uh, if it's something you need or like it's in a old or in a, in a specific vehicle or like uh, the cities will have utility vehicles that are more expensive. Because the price doesn't change a lot between a big car and a smaller car. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, first of all, where is your shop located? Uh, it's Prospect near Fillmore. It's just a few blocks from here. Okay. And when you talk about like business uh, strategy, and like, is it specifically toward auto mechanics or is it just business in general? No, business in general. I mean, as as I say, I wasn't a mechanic, or uh, I just um, have a good. Uh, when I bought Cooper Automotive, I did all my research. I didn't know anything about about uh, auto mechanic uh, shops. And when I found out, all my numbers were uh, just about 5% off of what they really wear in, the, in real life. So, and I did my projections. And the first year I was 5, I was 10% above my best case scenario. So... It's any any type of, of uh, business. There was good morning. Oh, oh. oh. hi. Hello there. I'm Lo. Um, my question is sort of about that that swing period around 2019 and COVID and onward, 
Um, I'm curious more about, you said there were some issues with people and then how you rallied from those things and from COVID to be able to continue to grow yourself now. And, and where do you see that, you know, how that occurred for you? Well, yeah, it was interesting. I mean, uh, COVID uh, came and, and uh, I couldn't find any mechanics. Actually, I bought, uh, the year after I bought Cooper Automotive, I bought Colorado Transmissions, so we are a transmission shop too. Um, and then just starting COVID, I had bought a uh, body shop that was in the same building, and I just couldn't find anybody to work in it, so I had to close it. And I, because I was struggling to get people to work at my shop, so there were no mechanics around. I couldn't find any mechanics. There was a time that I was working by myself. Uh, just uh, doing uh, service running in the morning and fixing cars at night um, until I decided. And I also changed, so I changed my model where I could, I found a, a manager and, and mechanics that would work with that manager. So I would take care of the business part of it and not trying, because I would get sucked in by the operation. And it's like, I'm fixing a car and I'm talking to a customer and I'm doing everything. And that would just uh, take all the time that I had. And so I was just doing that. So what I did is change that to a different uh, structure. So you're saying that you did, you do gas or electric. Do you also do hybrid or uh, hydrogen fuel cell as well? well I'm, I'm playing with one. Uh, I still, I'm uh, trying to research it. I, I bought one, I brought California. I have a Mirai that, uh, that I'm going to take apart and, and reverse engineering it. Really, my objective on that one is more on the just a general power. Um, um, I want to use it for my house. So I only use a power cell for my house and just do hydrogen. So instead of, of um, saving uh, energy in batteries, I'm going to save it in hydrogen and then use it. That's the model. <laughs> And do you have a, a basic idea of what the price would be on for something like that? I have no idea yet. <laughs> All right, so you kind of like skimmed over this, and uh, it was a lot to unpack. You came to the U.S. because of your ex-wife's husband's parents. Exactly. So tell us. <laughs> that's like everyone's story. Um, so tell us the story. Like, how did you come to the U.S. Um, and then you end up with a mechanic shot with a shot. So tell us that piece. Well, um, my I got divorced. Uh, my uh, and my kids were still little, so my ex-wife decided to. Uh, I mean, she was dating a guy in San Diego, so she one day asked me, "Hey, you know, can we? Would you be interested in moving to San Diego?" And at the moment, I was doing consulting in Mexico, so I didn't have a, a really uh, uh, a job. I mean, I was doing consulting for big companies, but I would depend on the project. So I was like, well, I'll just make a project of doing this. Um, I went to San Diego. It's very crowded, very expensive. With the money I had, I couldn't buy a business that could I could survive in. So I kind of looked for a job there. Uh, but then they came to visit uh, Colin, his my ex-wife's uh, husband. His parents live here in Chapita Park. And they brought the kids with them. And they called me, and of course, the mom said, hey, call your dad, huh? So, um, so they called me, hey, this place is nice. So I started researching here. Uh, actually, I, I mean, I travel all around Colorado Springs and Google. And, and then um, I came here, I was looking for any business, because there's two ways I could move here legally. So I either I find a business and I have an investor's visa, or I find a job. Jobs here in my field are very hard to come because I don't have a citizenship, so I can't have security clearance, and most of the jobs in my field are security clearance uh, jobs. So I, I'm like, the, and the way that I can control it is with a business. So I bought the business, and we all moved here. Uh, so my ex-wife, my her husband, uh, my kids, my second wife, but I'm not with her anymore, but... <laughs> Her kid, so we all moved here. I, I, I packed up the Suburban, I gave each kid a box, uh, and that's what they could bring. So that's what we brought. And that's how we started here in 2012. Well, 
Well, we've had the pleasure of having you at BetNet for quite some time now. And I was always curious when you, you talked about your business, Cooper Automotive. I said, the guy doesn't look very Cooperish. But <laughs> so now I know the backstory there. And you know what? I don't have a question. <laughs> And I don't have a question. I know that's all right. Great job, Frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, because the question I was going to ask you answered uh, answering her question last time. So let me make up one. <laughs> How are you, you're in your 12th year, or almost your 12th year of doing business with Cooper here now. What, what do you project your business doing a lot of people like to say, well, give me your five-year plan, or where do you see yourself in five years? I, I like to dial that back to maybe two years from now. Now that you've gotten past some hard stuff, where do you see Cooper being? Well, my idea is to get to a point where I start making money. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, novel idea. Uh, yeah, that would be nice, but... Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, I hope uh, next year I'm around a million and a half uh, if we get there. Um, I still need another mechanic. Um, uh, so I need, uh, I mean, I, it, it's been growing, but I still have space to grow. I can work. I have hours uh, available in my, in my so the, I rent this place, but I can extend the hours. So I have still on that shop to grow. If I grow enough and, and I have a good structure, I can buy other shops and, and expand that way, but that's probably the second year. So that's kind of where, where I'm heading. And I want to work on my uh, electric to car, I mean, my toys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, purchasing a business that uh, you didn't have uh, experience within that industry, uh, aside from being able to stay in the country as an entrepreneur, what has been the most rewarding um, thing that you've gotten from purchasing a business within an industry that you didn't have experience in? Well, I mean, it's a lot of experience that you earn. I mean, knowing about other businesses and that, I mean, one of the advantages I had of working in, in, um, in the consulting is that I work with big business and with a lot of different businesses. So my uh, takeaway from all that is that we think we do things differently, and we don't. I mean, every business is almost the same. They have different objectives. They have different things. But at the end, we all do the same thing. We have to sell a product. We have to control our expenses. We have to uh, find a profit. We have to do all those things are very similar. So, uh, I mean, the hardest part for me is... I'm a good project manager. I'm a bad manager. I don't. I. I it's hard for me to con to uh, to be a manager of people. Mm -hmm. So I have to hire a manager that'll do it for me mm -hmm. yeah. because I'm a good guy, but I'm a. Uh, I'm, I'm. I sometimes lack a little bit yeah. of uh, uh, being hard with people. You know, like so. I need somebody that does that. That so. You learn also that mm -hmm. you have to find people that do things better than you, yeah. so you can well, do absolutely. it better. That's great stuff. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Anyone else have questions? You wanna? Mm. Well, if anybody, I mean, I'm open for one-to-ones or uh, whenever you, um, if you want to know more about the stories, a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> So, a um, couple of points. First of all, yeah, it is. Okay, a couple of points. First of all, it, there is so much self-awareness and understanding that you are good at specific tasks and not necessarily good at leading other people or managing other people. Uh, I think oftentimes we, we believe that if we are good widget makers, then we are going to be phenomenal at leading other people to, lead, to, to, to build widgets. And that's not the truth. Leadership is a different skill set. I really want to applaud you for recognizing that your ability to manage and guide other people is not your strength, but it doesn't exclude you from being involved with business. Um, secondly, 
as you are trying to build your business and you are creating your pivot points, what do you think is the, the biggest opportunity in front of you right now to start to, to gain new customers? Well, um, the, the new customers are, it's an interesting thing, depending on that. It's very varied depending on the business. Uh, so I have Colorado Transmissions and I have Cooper Automotive. And interestingly, they have a different uh, reach. Uh -huh. So my auto repair shop works well. It's, it's a very convenience-oriented uh, business. So my business is five miles around it, 10 miles for some things. I mean, bigger projects, people tend to research a little more, but usually it's a convenience thing. If you got your brakes are squealing or doing something, you go to a place that it's nearby because it's convenient. Um, so word of mouth for me, it's the biggest um, resource for getting customers, but like, Transmissions are, are bigger projects. Usually, people think, "Oh, I need a transmission; it's going to be four or five thousand dollars." So I need to research a little more. So the area expands to 10, 15 miles from uh, my my uh, location. So it's very local business. So I my my marketing is very local or very specific, and that's why relationships are very important for me or networking does a very good, I mean, 30% of my business comes from networking. Uh, and most of the rest of it is just return business. Uh, so uh, go, doing uh, fleets, for example, are, are good for me when I go and visit uh, fleet managers or uh, business owners and things like that. But uh, I mean, for me right now, still at the point where I'm at, if I had five shops across then I would have a bigger reach, and then I would uh, benefit from uh, more like radio or television or other uh, products for marketing. But right now, as, as I'm in one place, it really doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do a big marketing uh, or big uh, television or radio. So I don't need, I mean, people in Pueblo are not gonna come all the way here. You know? Right. I don't know if that answers the question. It does. All right. <laughs> I think you can. We, what can we, hold on. Oh I know. Goodness. I mean, what how many times have you asked have this question? What can we do to help you? How many decades have you asked that question? It's been 30 years. You've been doing that for 30 years. <laughs> well, as I say, uh, I I would love to uh, talk to other shop managers, uh, automotive shop managers, or uh, I I mean I'm uh, mechanics. I'm always uh, and look for good uh, mechanics that want to work in a shop uh, or plant manager or owners. Uh, but I'm, I mean I, I love. Uh, doing the business part of landing, so I'm happy to just, you know, help out anybody that needs to do it, make a business plan or things like that. Um, and, and that's just a passion of me.